In example one, we have two congruent sides, which means that their opposite angles, x plus seven and 55, are equal to one another. We can solve for x, giving us x equals 48. which then means that this angle is also 55 degrees. We also know that the angles of a triangle must add to 180 degrees. So y plus 55 plus 55 equals 180. y plus 110 equals 180. y equals 70. And there's my solution for the first triangle. In the second triangle, I'm given a right angle, which is 90 degrees. And again, I have two congruent sides, meaning that the other two angles are congruent. If I have a 90 degree angle, we already know that the other two angles must sum to 90 degrees. And if those angles are congruent, that means each of them must be 45 degrees. So x is, in fact, 45. We can set 9y equal to 45, meaning that y equals 5. And that is my answer for the second triangle. Theorem 4.8 is closely related to the base angle theorem that we saw above, and it's actually the converse to the base angle theorem. And what this theorem tells us is that now, if I have a triangle such that two angles are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are also congruent. So if angle A is congruent to angle C, then side AB is congruent to side BC. And we'll use that knowledge for example two. In this example, I want you to again find the values of X and Y And the second triangle problem is a little tricky. So take your time, work it out. Resume the video when you're ready to see the solution. For our first triangle, we are given two congruent angles, which means their opposite sides are congruent. So 5x plus 5 must equal 35. 5x equals 30. x equals 6 we see that the 16 was actually, in this case, unnecessary. The second situation is a little trickier. Let's start by marking the congruent sides we know. We have these two congruent angles, which makes these two sides congruent. We then have these double arced angles, which makes this far right side congruent to that middle length, so in fact, all three of these sides that I have marked are congruent. I notice that two of the sides only have a y in them. The other side has an x. To solve for y, I'm gonna first work with the two sides that have the y, and we know that since their sides are congruent, that their measures must be equal to one another. I can subtract y from both sides, then add 4 to both sides. Divide by 4, I get y equals 4. If I plug y equals 4 back in to these values up here, I find that each side is actually a measure of 16 units. So 3x squared minus 32 must be 16. Add 32 bo to both sides. We get 3x squared equals 48. 